Listen, I know my upload schedule's been all kinds of weird lately, but it's Women's History Month. I would never miss an opportunity to talk about my gay historical crushes. It's the end of the 1800s, and everyone in Europe who's got a gun is scrambling for a piece of Africa. Among the multitude of campaigns was the voulet Chanwan mission, led by Paul Voulet and Julien Chanwan, which aimed to unify French territories in West Africa as well as conquer the Chad Basin. The voulet Chanwan mission is infamous. It's remembered today for its descent into depravity and extreme violence. Torture, enslavement, pillaging, rape, burning entire villages to the ground, and then murdering the inhabitants. You name it, they did it. The goal seemed less like unification and more like a competition to see who could be the most vile b on the continent. Hey, go into Africa to commit war crimes. You want anything? The locals quickly learned to fear the sight of the French tricolor, and many of the native peoples were subjugated with little resistance. Voulet and Chanwan seemed unstoppable. And then they met the Panther Sorcerer Queen. Yes, Panther Sorcerer Queen. What kind of f***ing badass do you need to be to be called a Panther Sorcerer Queen? And why didn't Voulet and Chanwan run from her fast enough? I'm Vibby. And on this episode of A Space Alien Explains, Serunia. So before we get more into this, I need to explain what a Serunia is. Serunia isn't a name, it's a title meaning queen or female chief in the Hausa language. The Serunia serves a dual purpose. She is a political ruler, but she's also described as a mistress of all spirits. So as a Serunia, not only do you have the responsibility of guiding and protecting your people, you also get some sweet magic powers to help you do it. Nice. But historically speaking, if we're talking about Serunia, like THE Serunia, the most famous of all Serunias, they're usually talking about Serunia Mongu. And just so you know, yes, this video is about Serunia Mongu. Serunia was the leader of the Asna, a subgroup of the Hausa people who inhabited Niger during the late 19th century. She was said to be born with yellow eyes like a panther, the panther being the symbol of the Asna people. Serunia was 20 years old when she became queen, taking her father's place after his death. Before the French came along, Serunia was already very much used to the whole defending the realm routine. She drove off the Fulani people who had attempted to convert the Asna to Islam, and before that had to deal with the Tuareg, who had tried to raid her village on several occasions. So already, she's got plenty of experience in the art of telling people to f off. When the French began moving in, she turned to the Tuareg and Fulani for assistance, asking that they put their differences aside and band together to fight off a much bigger foe. They both rejected this idea. The Fulani in particular had actually sent back the decapitated head of one of her messengers, and Serunia realized she'd have to do this alone. Part of her preparations involved letting the French know that she fully intended to stop the expedition's progress. According to one account, she wrote to the expedition's leaders what is described as an insulting letter. I'm not sure what exactly she said in that letter, but I like to think she called out Voulet specifically and said his mom was a hoe. The French took up Serunia's challenge, and on April 15, 1899, began marching to the fortress city of Lagu, where Serunia concentrated most of her forces. The next day, when the expedition arrived at the city, Serunia's warriors greeted them with the toughest resistance the French had ever seen during their entire campaign. Serunia hid the women and children in a thick, nearly impenetrable bush, while the warriors were assembled on the field. Her forces had killed four Frenchmen and wounded six in the attack, before getting too overwhelmed by French firepower and retreating into the bush. When Voulet stepped into Lagu, everyone was gone. All the inhabitants, and even the livestock, had disappeared along with Serunia. So all Voulet got out of this was about 7,000 wasted cartridges and four dead guys. Now, Serunia could have found satisfaction with her extremely impressive attempt at Waste His Time 1899, but she wasn't just gonna leave it at that. Serunia wasn't done. From then on, Serunia led guerrilla-style raids against French camps, appearing suddenly from the grass in the dead of night and then disappearing again just as quickly. She was so effective at this, the French eventually just gave up trying to subdue her. As this was happening, word about Serunia and her mysterious powers began spreading. Many African conscripts who had been forced to fight for the French began deserting out of fear of her magic. Speaking of her magic powers, did they actually do anything? Well, word got back to France about the atrocities committed by Voulet and Chanwan in West Africa. The French government sent Lieutenant Colonel Klob as a replacement to head the mission, since the first two guys turned out to be real b****. 
Voulet decided he wasn't having any of that, and, well, he shot that mother A mere few hours after killing a higher officer, Voulet went completely ape stripped off his badges of rank, and gave a bizarre speech about how he was no longer a Frenchman, but a black chief who would found a new empire with the help of his men who were devoted to him heart and soul. Yeah, that didn't go so hot. Shen Wan was totally on board with that plan, but the other officers who hadn't completely lost their minds immediately bailed. The other soldiers revolted, and Voulet and Shen Wan were assassinated by their own men. And the Asna believe all of this happened thanks to Sarunia's magic. Holy sh**, is that what magic does? I need to get me some of that. Sarunia's story is one that's kind of difficult to piece together. Written accounts that mention her are very few, and most of what we do know was passed down through oral histories. According to one story, on the day of the final assault by the French, the sorcerer queen hid away in her palace. Suddenly, the doors flew open and a panther ran out, leaping over the walls and disappearing into the wild. When they looked for her in the palace, she was nowhere to be found. Sarunia was never seen again. And from there, she faded into obscurity. Her legacy wasn't revived until the 1980s, when a novel and later a movie was produced retelling the events of her life. This video topic was chosen by my patrons, so a big thank you to my honorary aliens Abu Kitty Chris, Poppy00, and Shinare. Stick around to the end of the video to see who else out there is also an honorary alien. If you'd like to become an honorary alien yourself, be sure to check out my Patreon. If you join the $2 tier, you'll be able to vote on the topic for next month's video, which by the way is for Aliens Month, and you can bet I'm gonna have some cool for you to choose from. Anyway, patreon.com slash a space alien explains. Help me decide what weird sciencey alien sh you want me to talk about next. Sarunia's courage teaches us a lot about pushing forward in the face of insurmountable odds. Because with enough perseverance and determination you can overcome anything. What? No. Because one day the universe might just turn in your favor and kill all your enemies. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. This week's featured fan art is by Yensitive on Twitter. Link to the artist page is in the description. And here's some comments from the last video. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. If you'd like to support the channel, links to my Patreon, Ko-Fi page, and art commission info are in the description. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Taya Ozaira for art and channel updates. Thank you so much again for watching, and here come the honorary aliens.